Good morning, everyone, and uh, happy Friday to you on this uh, May the 22nd. And uh, as I've been doing on Fridays, I just wanted to record a short video to encourage you today in God's Word. So today has been kind of a rainy and stormy morning uh, so far. And as I was watching the rain come down a while ago, uh, really a beautiful, a beautiful rain that we had this morning, <clears throat> I was reminded about uh, the, a passage of scripture uh, that talks about storms. And uh, I want to share with you uh, that passage today, and I want to share with you something about storms that you might not have thought of before. You know, a lot of times we think about storms as, as being bad. In fact, um, you know, like, for example, the message I preached last Sunday morning, I used a storm as, as, a, as a metaphor for trials. And we often do that, don't we? We talk about trials as storms and and we talked about the Apostle Paul and how he rode through the storm uh, on the Mediterranean Sea uh, during his journey to Rome. <clears throat> but today I want to share a different truth with you about storms. All right, so uh, let's take a look at that. And it's in Psalm 18, a wonderful psalm of David, a psalm of, about God's protection and deliverance and blessing in his life. And you're probably familiar with it, or at least some of the verses of the psalm. I'm going to start reading at verse number one. David says, I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised so shall I be saved from mine enemies. And really that verse would maybe be kind of like the theme of what we're about to read in the, in the verses that follow. Uh, but David here talks about God as being his rock and his fortress and all those things that our God is to us. Uh, but I want you to notice uh, what David said that he was going to do. He said he was, he was going to call upon the Lord. He was going to cry out to God in prayer. And I want to read to you now. He gives a little bit more detail about that. Uh, starting in verse number four, he said, The sorrows of death compassed me, and the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. The sorrows of hell compassed me about, the snares of death prevented me. So in those verses, we see David in trouble. David is in going through a bad time. In fact, he talks about the troubles that he was going through as uh, being floods uh, that, that threatened to uh, swamp his boat, maybe, so to speak. And so there we see storms in that picture of, of a trouble or a trial of life that David was having to deal with. Uh, but I want to read to you now about what happened when David called upon the Lord. Verse number six says, In my distress I called upon the Lord and cried unto my God. He heard my voice out of his temple, and my cry came before him even into his ears. So this is a very important statement, folks. David said that when he was in trouble, that he called upon God, he cried out to him, and God heard his cry. God heard his voice. His prayer came into the ears of God. And that's the central truth that I want you to grab a hold of today, believer, that when you cry out to God, when you are in trouble, uh, when the floods are threatening to, uh, to swamp you, to overwhelm you, uh, no matter what your trouble may be, David was dealing with troubles from enemies, but it could be other troubles, other trials that you're going through. Uh, but when you are in trouble and you cry out to God, God hears and he will help you. Let's read about how God came to help David. Verse number seven, okay? It says, then, okay, this is after God heard David's cry and, and, and his prayer came into God's ears. Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations also of the hills moved and were shaken because he was wroth or angry. There went up a smoke out of his nostrils and fire out of his mouth devoured. Coals were kindled by it. He bowed the heavens also and came down and darkness was under his feet. And he rode upon a cherub and did fly. Yea, he did fly upon the wings of the wind. He made darkness his secret place. His pavilion round about him were dark waters and thick clouds of the skies. At the brightness that was before him, his thick clouds passed, hailstones and coals of fire. The Lord also thundered in the heavens, and the highest gave his voice, hailstones and coals of fire. Yea, he sent out his arrows and scattered them, he, and, he, and he shot out lightnings and discomfited them. 
Then the channels of waters were seen, and the foundations of the world were discovered at thy rebuke, O Lord, at the blast of the breath of thy nostrils. He sent from above, he took me, he drew me out of many waters. He delivered me from my strong enemy, and from them which hated me, for they were too strong for me. They prevented me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my stay. He brought me forth also into a large place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. And I'm going to stop right there. We could go on reading. It's a great psalm. And I would encourage you to look at this passage of scripture today and maybe study it tonight in your family devotions. Uh, but right here in this part of the passage, uh, David describes God's response to his cry for help. And amid, uh, amid other pictures uh, uh, or, or uh metaphors or representations of God's help for David. David describes God God coming to his defense like a thunderstorm, uh, like uh, uh, the, the hailstones and the, and the, uh, the fiery lightnings and, and, and the floods of waters and the dark clouds roll in, you know, and that thunderstorm rolls in. And I think most of us here in Kansas are pretty familiar with the power of a thunderstorm. When you see the power of that thunderstorm, believer, what you need to understand is that is just a picture of the power of your God. And that's the picture that David gives us here, uh, that God came to his help. Uh, in fact, I, I love this verse right here, uh, going back up in the passage. It says that when David called upon God, uh, it says, uh, God bowed the heavens also, verse number nine, and came down. Believer, when you call upon God, when you are in trouble, God comes down, okay? His help is there. His power is there. He comes to your assistance. When you call out to him, when you cry out to him, your prayer comes into his ears and you're crying out to help from God uh, because you feel like you're about to go under. Uh, the floods of many waters are about to take you down. No matter what those troubles may be, then God comes to your assistance. Don't ever question the power of your God to deliver you in trouble. And when you cry out to him, understand that your cry for help is very important to God. And he has all the power at the universe at his disposal to help you. And so I want to encourage you to do like David did, okay? When you're going through troubles, when you're having difficulties, you call upon the name of the Lord. You cry out to your God in prayer, and he will help you. His assistance is very real. His, his help is very powerful in the lives of his children. And uh, he will deliver you. He will help you just as he delivered David. I love what he says here in the last few verses that I read to you. Uh, he brought me uh, out uh, into a large place, verse number 19, he delivered me because he delighted in me. Yes, uh, uh, you might have thought you were going down, but God will draw you out of those many waters. God will set you in that large place before you felt like all the pressures of life were, were crushing in on you on every side. God will deliver you. Why? Because he delights in you. Not because you're worthy. Not because of anything that, you know, special or good that you have done, but because you're his child. Because he loves you. He has set his love upon you. And, and, and he delights in you. And he delights to help you when you need his help. And so today I just wanted to encourage you from, the, from uh, those verses of Psalm 18 where we see the storm pictured in a different way. Not as the trouble of life, uh, but we see also the help of God being pictured as a storm, a storm of deliverance, a powerful storm of God to save you, to rescue you from your troubles. What an awesome picture of the power of God. And I hope today that when you see the storm, if a storm rolls in later on, like they're forecasting, or next time you see the storm, that you'll allow that, uh, that this passage of scripture to remind you, hey, that storm, that's awesome. I mean, that's an awesome demonstration of power in nature. But folks, God is the God of storms. He's the one that made the thunderstorm. He's the one that has those things under control. And he is far more powerful. And he delights to hear your cry and to help you when you need him. And so do like David did. Call upon the name of the Lord who is worthy to be praised. I'm looking forward to seeing you on Sunday morning by live stream. Uh, this Sunday morning, I've decided I'm going to resume my series on Genesis. And so we're going to be back this Sunday morning in Genesis chapter number three. And we're going to continue with our study of that chapter 
and about the curse. And uh, so some very important things we need to learn from the rest of Genesis chapter 3. I know it's been quite a while since we've been in Genesis, uh, but I'm looking forward to getting back into that study this Sunday morning. I'll look forward to seeing you then. And until then, I trust you're encouraged. You let me know if you need something. Uh, feel free to contact me. I want you to know I'm praying for all of our church family. I love you. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.